everyone, my name is Quizzical and today we will be talking about schools and Scrabble. So why are we talking about schools and Scrabble? You know, it's that age old issue in the UK where we can't get enough youth players. But this time it's a bit more noticeable. MSI are holding their Junior World Scrabble Championships um, today tomorrow and the day after I think and there are only three countries competing the USA Trinidad and Tobago and Pakistan and despite that saying well hey there's no uh, the other countries like Malaysia Australia the Philippines in there the biggest issue is that the host country isn't sending anyone and we have players in this country um, we have a former world youth scrabble champion you know and we have players that have competed at world youth champs before not including me because i am too old to compete by like a year which is very strange unless you guys realize how old i am in which case good for you you know how old i am but a lot of debate has gone on um ever since like we had our first UK Youth Championships about how we're going to encourage more people to play from a young age. So for those of you that don't really know me, I started playing Scrabble uh, in the womb. My mum played when she was pregnant with me. But no, I've, I started playing um, over a board competitively when I was eight years old. and pretty much all my opponents were 60 plus and you know when your opponent has 50 years life experience over you that's quite something but um when i started playing there was literally austin shin and maybe two other teenagers that was it and sometimes it's not about being put off by the people it's about you know, finding a kid that actually kind of enjoys competitiveness and words and maths. But you're probably thinking, oh, I'm going off on a, a tangent here, and I really, really am. So, it's been discussed for the longest time, you know, between MSI, between the APSP, how do we get Scrabble in this country into schools? And Scrabble is a mind sport, and other mind sports such as chess are really popular among young people well young people that want to play chess anyway young people that want to do some form of mind sports and the thing is with chess it's that it's really easy to pick up the vast majority of people will know how the pawn moves how the queen moves how the rook moves you know all of that how to do a castle maybe not what a zugzwang is but you know stuff Scrabble is a bit more complicated because most people will be aware of yeah you got to put words on a board and whoever scores the most points win but besides that they may not understand oh if you play seven tiles you you have a bonus you know it you know you can make like six words in one turn provided that you play like one horizontal word and you've got like six overlapping words so the concept of being good at Scrabble and the idea of being better at Scrabble is a lot harder to understand and to teach because y there are very few people out there that actually know how to play Scrabble and how to get better at Scrabble and that's something that teachers in schools can't really teach students. A lot of teachers will know how to play chess, they'll know about thinking ahead and things and for them it's easy to begin a chess club because there's not so much to teach whereas with Scrabble there's there's the maths, there's the spelling, there's the strategy, there's the tile tracking, there's the keeping school, there's this, there's that, there's literally everything. I'm a fidgety person. Um, but yeah there are so many different aspects of Scrabble to pick up as you guys have probably seen in my guides videos there are like literally tons of different concepts and just imagine trying to explain that to like a 10 year old kid who's never seen the game before it, it would pretty much put them off especially 
if you you know try and start them playing against adults who are going to completely kill like kill crush whatever you know completely destroy them at the game so i feel like the best way to introduce scrabble into schools would be as a kind of education tool um it's i've often heard that people that leave secondary school are or at least some of the people that leave secondary school are those unable to spell and unable to do simple mental maths and if we were able to get scrabble into schools instead of just going jumping straight into the game we could say hey you know maybe we can improve your mental maths if we you know start you off with the sim with just a simple word let's say dog and we ask you to add it up and then we build up the level of difficulty all the way up to like a 27 timer that's only really seen if you're deliberately setting up the board but there we go and you know teaching someone how to do that kind of mental maths that we see in scrabble while it's just addition and multiplication I feel like it really improved my own abilities in maths because I knew how to do mental maths. So many people would tell me like, Jess, how are you able to do these maths calculations in your head? And I'm like, I just am. Like, why aren't you able to do this as well? Like, I don't want to use a calculator. You know, it's not that hard to times 9 by 16 in your head and get 90 plus 54 to equal 144. That's just how I've learned to do maths. Um, But on the other hand, on the spelling side of Scrabble, you can use Scrabble or another word game, maybe like Bananagrams, and just say, well, I want to ask you to spell a word, and I want you to pull these letters into the right order that I want you to spell the word. So let's say the word's coffee. So what letters make a cuss sound? You've got the C and you've got the K. What letters make the E sound? You've got an E, you've got double E, you've got IE, you've got Y, you've got EY. You know, there's so many different sounds that you can help them not only visualize a spelling but also physically get involved in how to spell a word because you've probably heard that there are loads of different ways to learn there's like auditory learning there's visual learning there's um kinetic learning and not everyone is able to learn by listening i'm a pretty bad listen learner i i a lot of times i mishear people so and i don't tend to remember things very well if i just hear them whereas if i read them i can remember them okay but if i'm actually doing something i remember how to do it a lot more but um to recall it i have to then do it again <laughs> so my uh my memory's a bit wacky but at the same time you could you don't have to introduce the game of scrabble to somebody in a school until they're capable with the little bits of scrabble that that make it scrabble i also think one of the bigger issues is how we go about getting ourselves into schools in the first place um because not every teacher knows Scrabble and not every teacher can give up the time for Scrabble you've got to find some way to get the players themselves into the schools to to be able to say hey guys you know we've got someone who's coming in here maybe to teach you how to spell better or how to do maths better and like different weeks you could have like a different skill like you could say well this this week we're going to learn how you can do mental maths and tricks to learn how to do mental maths better. Or this week we're going to learn, you know, all the different sounds that, and letters that make up those sounds. And, you know, how a simple word like coffee could maybe look like five different ways. And then you realise like how to recognise a word sometimes. Sometimes it's just about learning spellings, but sometimes it, if you understand the sounds, maybe it'll help. I'm not a linguist, I don't claim to understand any of this, but um, I feel like over the years I'm more and more aware of sounds and how words sound. 
So if I hear a word, I may be, I'm able to say, oh, well, it could be any of these combinations of letters that make up this word. And then for me, it's which one kind of looks the most right based on my understanding of words in the English language. So sometimes it's like, well, patterns of letters, which I believe is how the Thai players do so good. They just learn patterns of letters, which is really all in languages. Um, but yeah, I think I, I don't want to go on forever. This video is like 10 minutes long already. And I really, I could probably talk forever about how rubbish the UK is at encouraging extracurricular activities. And that's, that's the other big thing. In the UK, schools only get graded by academics. They don't get graded by your extracurricular activities. And extracurricular activities don't really matter until, you know, you're applying for the job and or a job and they're like, well, what do you do with your life outside of your education? And you're like, what do I do? And I wish schools actually encouraged you to do something that you liked. Of course, not, not everyone is going to want to do Scrabble. You know, maybe... You know, who knows? Maybe somebody would wants to go every Sunday to Finsbury Park and watch baseball. You know, maybe somebody wants to go and play sports or or become like a, a film fanatic or or like go to museums and whatever. You know, it should be encouraged that people actually go out and do that. And schools really only focus on your education and they don't really teach you that you should go out and do something else with your life and that it's possible for you to go out and do something else with your life that you like and become good at it or just enjoy it which leads me to something else that I thought about Scrabble which means this video is going to go on quite a lot the other thing that I find with Scrabble especially in the UK, I stopped finding it fun when I was 13, 13, 14. And that was seven years ago that I stopped finding the game fun. So some of the reasons why I stopped finding it fun, I was playing the same people repeatedly again and again. And while there are some people out there in the Scrabble scene that are my friends, and that's awesome, they're 30 years or more older than me. And it's it's really hard to find any kind of connection with people that are just not your generation. Like, a lot of people just ask me about my education, and that's been pretty much the case in the UK for the last decade it's like oh how are you doing if you finish college now no I've just graduated university you know nobody seems to really know that I'm like as old as I am anymore or that I'm actually you know this far into my life and you know imagine if we had like I don't know I don't know how the other UK youths are with this but uh, imagine if there were like a couple more kids in the scene and every kid got asked this. It starts to become like a bit of a, you know, it's like, could you please ask something else about me? Because I'm not just about my education. Uh, another thing that I've noticed uh, through it not being fun is that there are a lot of guys in the scene, uh, specifically at the top level. There are many many blokes and you know I'm not a bloke I'm a I'm a female and you know blokes do blokey things with each other and I'm not really that girly like I happily talk sports with people but not many players are actually aware of that or aware that they could talk to me and have it not be awkward like you know a, lo a lot of the the friends that I have overseas you know if I tell them yeah you guys can hug me and whatever like and I'm completely fine with that now that I'm of a certain age I'm completely fine with that 
and it's great to know that people don't have to be afraid of being in my company and that links to it you know that links to how fun I see the game like the most fun that I have at tournaments is when there are people there that are willing to go out of their way to talk to me and when I was a kid not many people were willing to go out of their way to talk to me maybe because I spent all my time crying but that's 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 a point for another day that's that's also another reason why we shouldn't really have smart kids playing and if you've watched Child Genius you'll probably realise that seeing a kid fail at something is it's a terrible idea but yeah I'm going to end the video here before I end up going on a really long rant and uh I hope you guys enjoyed listening to me talk for 15 minutes I mean I, I didn't really enjoy hearing me talk for 15 minutes but there we go I hope you guys maybe listen to some of the ideas, maybe comment your own, um, you know, maybe think about your own experiences as a kid in an adult world, which is essentially what I've done my entire life. And, you know, think about how fun it is right now if a kid came into your, your Scrabble club or your tournament tomorrow, how encouraged would they be to stay? You know, because it's, it's one thing to have a kid that wants to try Scrabble and it's another thing to have a kid that just wants to play it. And a lot of the times kids come into the, the tournament scene wanting to play it, but the kids that come in just wanting to try it out, you know, there's not really an opportunity to do that. And I'm, I'm going to shut up. Now, I'm going to see you guys at the BMSC where well, we'll be having a live stream and we're gonna have some fun hopefully so bye guys <laughs>